Hey, I'm John, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a classic pressure plate switch that is used to open up a doorway. Uh, and this kind of mechanic is often used in a game where you use the switch to open a door, but you can't get through it because uh, it closes bef when you release the switch. Uh, and of course, the trick to that is you've gotta find a nearby object, and you push that onto the switch, and then you're able to walk through your doorway. And so I'm gonna show you how to set this up in this video. I'm gonna show you how to create the pressure switch and uh, the doorway and how to link the two together to operate like that. All right, I've got a new third person template open here and I'm just gonna start by creating a new actor that's gonna be our pressure switch. I'll just call this B underscore pressure switch. And I'll open that up and I'm gonna add a static mesh. And I'll call this base and set the static mesh to a chamfer cube. And I want to set the scale here on the z-axis to 0.1. And I'm going to change the material here. I'll just pick something, maybe this uh, wood walnut. And I'm going to now select my default scene root and add another static mesh. And we'll call this switch. And I'll set the static mesh for this one again to sh uh, chamfer cube. And this time I'll set the scale to uh, maybe 0.9 on X, 0.9 on the Y dimension, and 0.2 for the Z axis. Uh, and I'm also gonna move this up a little here. I'm just gonna say maybe set the Z location here to 10, or actually maybe like eight. Okay, and so uh, I'll change the material here for this as well. Let's pick a different kind of wood, maybe this uh, wood oak. And that'll be our switch here. And what I wanna do is add a box collision on top of the switch here so we can detect when another actor is overlapped with this. And so I'll select the default scene route here again, add box collision, and I'll call this overlap box. Um, and I'll just uh, scale it up a little bit here. We'll say scale it to maybe 1.3 uh, by 1.3 and uh, maybe 0.5 for the Z axis and move it up like this. All right, and so uh, I'll also check the collision settings for this box uh, overlap, and uh, we'll see here the collision presets is overlap all dynamic, uh, and I'm just gonna set this to overlap all, so it just it generates an overlap event no matter what overlaps this. And uh, so now we'll go to the event graph, and uh, we'll actuate this switch by using a timeline. I'm just gonna right click here, add a timeline, and I'm gonna call this uh, switch activate. And I'll double click that, and I want the switch to uh, activate fairly quickly, so I'll set the length here to maybe 0.7 seconds. I'm gonna add a track, add float track, and call it switch position. Uh, and then what I wanna do here, I'm gonna go back to the viewport, select this switch component, and uh, we set the Z location here to eight, and when I press down or something presses on to the pressure switch here, uh, we want this to drop down to something like here maybe, so it looks like, you know, something like maybe minus two, uh, minus two or maybe minus three here. Okay, uh, so I'll set this back to eight to start with, and back on the timeline here, uh, now I know my values that I need. What I wanna do is right click and add a key, uh, time zero, value eight, and then uh, right click, add a key, time uh, 0.7 seconds, so the end of the timeline, uh, value minus three. And I'll just zoom here to fit uh, horizontal and vertically and zoom out a little. And so we can see this timeline we've created, pretty basic, just a linear curve here going from a value of eight uh, to minus three over the course of 0.7 seconds. Uh, so back on the event graph here, what I want to do is uh, when an actor overlaps the switch, begin overlap, we'll play this, and uh, I'll just move this out of the way, right click and say end overlap, and get the actor end overlap event, and we'll reverse it on end overlap. And uh, what we need to do here is for the timeline to actually do something is uh, we need to drag off this update pin and use the switch position track. Uh, so what we wanna do is say, grab the switch static mesh component. And I'm gonna say set 
relative location. And uh, we'll plug the update pin into here. So we're setting the relative location on each update of the timeline. Uh, we'll split this struct pin here. And I'm going to drive the Z location of the switch from this switch position track. All right, so that's the basic setup for the pressure switch uh, so far. Let's drag one out into the scene and see how it works. We'll just walk onto this here. Perfect. Uh, and so that's working basically how we want it to. And so now what I want to do is set up uh, another actor for this pressure switch to activate. So we'll set up uh, our door here. And what I'll do is just right click blueprint actor and we'll call this B underscore door. Uh, and for this one, I'm going to add uh, static mesh again. And I'll just call this uh, door. And for the static mesh itself here, I'll set this to chamfer cube. And uh, let's see, we'll change the scale here. We'll say on the X dimension, make it maybe like 0.25. And then uh, for the Y dimension, let's say 2. And the Z uh, dimension, maybe 3. Yeah. All right, and then uh, I also want to have this, uh, right now the origin is right in the middle of the box, and so uh, half the box will be uh, below the ground if you drag one into the map here, for example. Just drag one out like this. We only see half of the uh, door. And so uh, what I want to do is uh, we want to raise this up, and uh, so I need to raise this up, I think, to uh, 150 on the Z axis, which is half of our three meter uh, scaled height here uh, and we'll just take a look here and yes that's now properly sitting pretty much on the ground so um, what I want to do now is we'll have the door activate or open uh, by raising up uh, from here so 150 is the starting point and we'll raise it up to open the door to we'll raise it up to something like maybe 400 here uh, okay so I'll put it back to 150 to start with and we'll create uh, another timeline. We'll go to the event graph. I'll just right click here, uh, timeline, add a timeline. We'll call this door activation. Uh, and then I'll double click that timeline. And for the length here, we'll say the door can open and close. Uh, let's say it could take two seconds to open or close. Um, track, add a float track, and we'll call this door position. Uh, and then what I'll do here is right click, add a key, and at the time of zero, at the very beginning, we want the value to be 150. And then I'm going to add another key here, and for time, this is going to be two seconds now, the very end of the track. Uh, we want the value to be 400. Uh, so I'll just uh, zoom here to fit, and we can see our curve here, pretty simple. It's over the course of two seconds, we're going from a value of 150 to 400. So now I can use this track uh, door position to drive the position of the door. We'll just grab the door here, say set relative location, and we'll plug the update pin to that, split the location pin, and drive Z from the door position. Now we just need to indicate when we want to play or reverse this timeline to open or close that door. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is add a variable, and I'm going to call it uh, pressure switches needed. And we'll set this to uh, an integer. And I'll just compile this and make the default value here a 1. So by default, you'll need one switch to open the door. Uh, you can set this you know, to 2, 3, 4, 5, however many you want, really. Um, so what we'll do is make another variable here, and we'll call this pressure switches active. Uh, and then for presser switches needed, uh, I'm going to just select this eyeball next to this here for instance editable, or you can click up here, instance editable. And so now for each door that you might place into your level, you can change the number of pressure switches needed right from the details panel in the, uh, in the uh, map. Uh, and so what I'll do here before I continue on is I'll just place an actual uh, wall around this piece of door. We'll just grab, say, this wall from the back uh, of the uh, template here. I'm just going to hold Alt and drag a piece forward here to duplicate it. 
and then I'll drag this off to the side like this. And uh, I'll just hold Alt again here and make another duplicate and drag it over like this. Okay. And so uh, we've got our instance of the door here. And because I said instance editable for pressure switches needed, we can see that's exposed here over in the details panel. And it's, a, it's got that one in there. I could change that to something else or make this door needs one, maybe another door over here needs three or something else, right? Um, so now what I need to do is uh, uh, we'll go back to the door actor here and I wanna make two custom events. I'm gonna make one called uh, switch activated and then another one here custom event uh, called switch deactivated all right and when a switch is activated uh, and we call this custom event we'll take pressure switches active and say plus plus so we'll add one to that and then uh, we'll take pressure switches active and say, is that greater than or equal to uh, pressure switches needed? And then we'll just get a branch from that. And so now if it's true, if, if the uh, number of switches active is greater than or equal to the number of switches needed, then play the door activation. Uh, and if it's not, then reverse it. And so we'll do the same steps here uh, for switch deactivated except for the plus plus here instead of plus plus we're going to use a minus minus node so we'll decrement the value of pressure switches active and then check again uh, is there enough switches active to open the door and if so then play and if not then reverse all right and so now we just need to basically set up uh, a way for our pressure switch to call these custom events when it's activated. And so to do that, I'm gonna go back to my pressure switch actor and I'm gonna add a variable here called door to activate. And I'm gonna set the variable type to B underscore door. Uh, so that's our uh, blueprint we just created for the door. And I'm gonna set instance editable for that again as well. And so now what I can do here is I'll go back to my map and I'll select my switch. And uh, I have here under the details now, this door to activate is exposed. And I can select a door from my scene here. I can just use this uh, uh, eyedropper and say, click this door. And now I've uh, basically linked this pressure switch to this door. And when I say linked, actually all I've done is created this reference a hard reference to the correct door. Uh, and so what I wanna do now is when we do an overlap event, uh, we'll take door to activate and call that switch activated function uh, just before doing the timeline for the to, uh, animation for the switch. And then on end overlap, same thing here, door to activate, uh, but now we'll call the switch, oops, uh, switch deactivated function. before reversing the switch animation. All right, and so uh, let's check it out here. Let's press play and uh, I'll go step on this here and the door opens up. All right, so that's the basic idea here now. And uh, we'll just go uh, one more step here is what you need to do essentially is uh, in order to get through this door is we're gonna have to put another object on top of the uh, switch here. So something like these uh, physics boxes over here. And so I'll just, uh, first of all, let's move one of these boxes a little bit closer, make this a bit easier. And uh, what I wanna do is I need to select uh, in the details here, I'm gonna search for generate, uh, generate overlap events. So by default, these uh, cubes that are in the template, uh, they're not set to generate overlap events. And so if you want, uh, some objects in your in your game or physics objects or whatever they are to be able to uh, activate this switch it has to have it has to generate overlap events so i'm going to select that for this cube and uh, we'll give it a try here all right let's just give this a little push here see if we can get that on there perfect and uh, yeah that's the effect we're after here so now that's got the door open and i can run on through 
Uh, and so uh, just quickly here before I end the video, I'll show you, for example, we can select the door here uh, and in the details panel here, maybe I want pressure switches needed uh, to be two. And uh, I'll just take my pressure switch here and go Alt and drag this over here. And uh, so since I duplicated that by holding Alt, it's already got this door to activate uh, the same one selected as this switch. So both of them are linked up to this door. And uh, the door is set to require two switches. And we'll hit play here. And now if I just step on this one, nothing happens. Uh, step on this one, nothing happens. Uh, you need to activate one switch with the box here and step on the other switch or of course bring another box over of course you know if you wanted to get through this door you're going to need a second object obviously um, to hold down this switch so that's basically it that's the tutorial and thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video